Hey guys, Vlad Kulikov here uh, with Kulikov Grammar Academy, home of Sambo and Jiu Jitsu Fusion. Uh, I would like to cover, I'd like to go over Anaconda Choke. I, I know it's been around for a long time, uh, but I love the choke and I believe that I can provide a couple details that will make it uh, way more successful, if not bulletproof, you know what I'm saying? So uh, usually it starts, uh, thank you Angel, my help today. It usually starts with a front headlock position. And a front headlock position means not pure guillotine with the neck only, but with the head and arm. Uh, you can end up in a position after snapping him down, stopping his shot perhaps, or sometimes he escapes the side control and we end up in a front headlock position. And also guys, just uh, if the arm is here, I don't even bother clearing it, I will go to uh, uh, arm and guillotine. But if the arm is here, then I will go to a dorse, Peruvian necktie or anaconda, and that's exactly what we want to be. Uh, what we're going to be working on today. So once I end up in this position, so first thing I want to do, I want to pinch this arm in. Anytime we're looking for head non choke, which anaconda is, we're looking for position when his arm is pulled across like a like a, like a straight jacket, you know. Actually, one of his defenses is to pull his elbow out. And if he does so, if I if I fail to collect the arm in, if he pokes his elbow out, then I'll try to sneak my leg in and work my reverse wrist series, right? Uh, just FYI. But usually I will pinch it in and I will suck it in. Next thing, sometimes you see he's in a good position. Once the arm is in, what I'll do, I'll, oh, I'll pull him back, deep right on the position. And once I pull him back before he recovered, I want to swivel my lock hook right here. Right? I want to see my lock. So I control the tricep, lock is here. And what I do, guys, I usually put my forearm on the floor. If my elbow is suspended, I'm using all my strength and strength only. So now I'm struggling with controlling the arm. But if I put my forearm or my elbow on the ground, then uh, I involve friction between my shoulder, my elbow and the mat. So it becomes much, much harder to move. And I'm also, for demonstration purposes, I'm here, but normally I'm here, right? Left toes, no laces down, and I'm driving into him. So my legs are never in contention to be caught. Because sometimes in the front headlock, but if your legs are here, a good guy will work you over, a good wrestler will work you over. So I pull him in, secure the armor spot, and I'm a spawn like this. Sometimes I can be on my knees, other times like this. And now what I want to do, I want to collect our uh, arm triangle. So whenever I reach for my arm, I don't go here. I try to go deeper. You know when you punch, you don't punch a target, you try to go through the target. Same thing here, my initial bite is on my tricep. And actually I was so happy, uh, I was at a seminar yesterday, and Josh Hinger was explaining his anaconda, and he focused on the same detail. So I feel extremely validated. All right, so uh, sometimes if I get here and I end up to this weak position, my wrist is weak, my squeeze is not there, so I try to go overbite this way. So if it slides anything, it will slide in a good position. So I'm looking for meaty grip without wrist being uh, bent backwards. So collect the arm, pinch, pull him in, oh, get here, and usually I say spider on the day. Uh, my arm is naturally here, so I will work that spider. Funnily enough, another, uh, another metaphor Josh Hinger used, until it's on his shoulder blade. Now I'm good to go, right? I'm gonna extend that leg and put my head in a hole. If I roll like this, uh, for a split second, his body will roll my face. Not a big danger, but unpleasant. But if I put my head in a hole, your handsome face will remain handsome. Once I'm here, a lot of people try to catch the leg. I don't try to catch the leg. When you do regular arm triangle, you don't catch the leg, right? You clear the leg. Same thing here. So what I'll do, I'll walk up a little bit in a fetal position. This foot here, uh, uh, my uh, big toe is down, so I can hip in. When I hip in, I collapse his uh, trachea like this, very much like when I do triangle and I pull it down, same thing. And my squeeze with the arms is very much the same as a uh, rear naked squeeze, right? And I get my cap. All right, sometimes, uh, a couple of times I encounter, so there's an exercise in sambo, right? Uh, I'm talking about alternative finish. Uh, sometimes guys strong. Uh, once I, I was playing a wrestler, a high school wrestler, and I got to Anaconda and I could not roll the guy for the life of me. His muscles were so strong, his rotational muscles, his strong muscles could not spin him. So what I had to employ, I had to employ a maneuver which is called high leg, right? So as opposed to rolling and doing slow, I want to get in this position and whip him like this. You see at no point my hips were down and that's what gives the uh, 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 roll, extra force. And the drill that we do, which I'll enjoy, which I'm gonna run, uh, my head still looks that way. Once I cannot rotate without moving my head, I will move my leg up, rotate, and high leg without leg. And I can do this, oh, right here. One way, or another way. Just to give my fingers, just to give the force. So, if I have difficulties rolling the guy, 
with a sausage on the grill technique, right? Have to let here. What I'll do, I'll just close my head and my leg. And you see how I spawn him? And again, feet in position, big toe down, keep in, squeeze, and anaconda you guy. So uh, whenever you learn, try to keep the mental checklist, where your hips are, where your grip is, where your elbow is, how you roll, and uh, if you stick to all these basics, your anaconda should be uh, way more successful, if not bulletproof. <laughs>